Colts. Rivers uncorks it. Sliding grab made at the 45. Pasco loses the football and the Bills jump on it with White. The question was it ruled down? Was it down with contact? And it looks like they're placing it where he was down. Is it the run was down? We will wind the clock. Just over the outstretched arm of Jerry Hughes. Well, the question is going to be, did Pascal get back to his feet after the catch? And assume the stance of being a runner again. 22 yards for the Colts. Still alive. Play is not going to happen because a timeout was called. Hard for the snap. Charge timeout. Buffalo, their third and final. It will be 30 seconds. The Bills are out of timeouts. A lot of jawing back and forth. We have 28 seconds on the clock. I think they want this. I think they want to see this play again. That's why they called this timeout. Because Pascal made the slide and looked like he was getting to his feet to become a runner again. And then the ball popped free from what I saw before. So Gene Steratore is going to join us right now. He's watching this in real time just like us. I know he can. Yeah, I, and I agree with Charles. Look, Zach Pascal goes down on his own, but he's not giving himself up. So now he gets up off of the ground, not touched down by contact, in my opinion, with any body part down that would have put him down there. And then as he is being tackled, to me, the ball comes loose prior to him or a body part hitting the ground, which would have put him down by contact. I believe this is a fumble, guys. Matt Milano jarred it loose. Tredavious White on the recovery. The initial hit by Poyer. And you're 100% right, Charles. That's Buffalo calling the timeout to make sure the officials take a look at this. And, and what Gene said is where I was going on that. He didn't give himself up. See, if you catch the ball and he just stays on the ground like that, you've given yourself up. You're not a runner. Play is going to be over. But as he moved himself up to become a runner again, ball's in play. We're, we're, we're schools back in session. So, and Milano knocks it free. Poyer had the punch. That might have loosened it. And then Milano absolutely knocked it away. See, he's getting, he's rising, and he's turning to become a runner again. And that's where the action happens. You mentioned the punch from Poirier first, Milano with the left hand second, and that ball comes free before he goes to the ground. And we have a clear recovery by Buffalo. This will be interesting. And Charles, if they rule it in favor of Buffalo, this game is over. Yes. Twenty-eight seconds on the clock. Frank Reich waiting for the word from Brad Allen. Sean McDermott, same situation. Gene, what's the discussion right now? You know, I think the other piece that you're looking at, too, is Poyer's hand as Zach is trying to get up. If any body part uh, is down and Pascal's knee is down, if anyone is touching him in any regard when that knee is down prior to him getting up, then he's down by contact, and boy, that is so close. But I haven't seen any Buffalo contact to Pascal as his knee is down. So I think he's he's back up. He's still a runner. The ball is still live. And then we play to the next portion, which I believe is a fumble before his body goes uh, goes down or he could be ruled down by contact. You know, the other part of it, too, guys, is Phillip Rivers and the Colts rushed to the line and tried to snap they the tried. ball. Now, the question, did he get it before the timeout? Because he completed a pass as the whistle was blown, indicating the timeout was called. And the officials came in and marked the timeout, gave the timeout. All game long, Philip Rivers and the Colts have been pushing the play clock. Did you get it off before the clock ran out? This time, they didn't want to push the play clock. They wanted to go fast, and Buffalo was trying to equal their speed. So as Gene just mentioned, is the knee down when he's touched or did he lift it right there see i think that he's up before the touching occurs and it's very very close i mean it is really close right there you see the left hand i feel like the knee is up as the left hand is going to his back but we'll find out what our replay officials have to say but just an immense call here <laughs> with 28 seconds on the clock 
And what quick thinking by Coach McDermott, guys, to rush and call that timeout just as the snap was about to occur. That is really a big move by Coach McDermott right there. Well, because you can't throw a red flag. We're under two minutes left. So you can't trigger it yourself. The only way that you can get the official's attention at that point is stopping the game with a timeout. And where he was in the game, having that time out in his pocket wasn't going to do him nearly as much good as trying to challenge this play. And understand this, guys. The clock is running, so a replay official wants to wait until the snap is imminent to stop the game. Because if you stop it too quick, now you've stopped the game clock and you're actually giving the offense an unfair advantage because the snap is not imminent. So they waited right till the end. Here's Brad Allen. After review, the ruling on the field stands. Buffalo is not charged a timeout as the replay official stopped the play. 